Hi, and welcome to Trojan Television. I'm Jordan Marshall. And I'm Andrew James. Today's first segment, we're going to be taking a look at Emma Giannopoulos. She is a figure skater who goes here to Moira, and recently she was invited to try out for the national team. Let's go take a look at that. Um, I've been skating for about 12 years now. Um, my mom was a skater, so when I was uh, young, she got me into the can skate program at the Queenie Figure Skating Club, and then it just kind of went from there. Well, at first I started taking private lessons here in Belleville, and then I started uh, getting some other coaching from Toronto. So right now I skate part-time um, at the Thornhill Figure Skating Club, where I get my coaching, and I also skate here at the Queenie Figure Skating Club, and a little bit at the Napanee Skating Club. <laughs> Um, lots of run-throughs of your program and extra run-throughs for endurance and um, I like to do just choreography sections just to be artistic and because a lot of people focus just on the jumps but there's so much more to your program than just jumps there's spins there's choreography there's footwork um, spiral sequences so there's so much else to work on other than jumps so it's also very important uh, lots of off ice so you need endurance, you need flexibility, you need strength, you need it all for figure skating. So I like to bike and cycle and swim. Um, I love to do yoga and um, just other strength training. I like something where I can be very artistic but yet something very strong. So this year I skated to, my long program was Queen Bohemian Rhapsody, so that was um, very much my style. I could be very artistic but yet very sharp with it. Um, the number of elements and sometimes the type of elements. So this year um, in my short program I had two spins, three jumps and a footwork sequence. In my long program I had seven jumps, uh, three spins and a spiral sequence. So in the short program you have footwork but in the long program you have spiral sequence. I've always done singles. <laughs> um, I like to prepare um, with lots of positive self-talk and lots of confidence. Um, also doing visual run-throughs of your performance beforehand works very well and yeah skating is such a mental sport so the mental training is such a big part of it. So to qualify for the nationals you have to do um, you have to go to your section so my section is Eastern Ontario and there was I think about 13 or 14 in my level and then you have to place in the top four to make it to the next round which is called Skate Canada Challenge and that's a Canada-wide competition and then so there's about 54 skaters in that one and then the top 18 from there get to move on to nationals they were in Kingston this year so that was that was very lucky for me because it was so close there's so many people coming from BC or PEI or Alberta and then I had to drive 40 minutes to get there <laughs> so well um, Preparing for it, really no different than any other competition, um, but my experience was amazing. It was honestly just a lot of fun because at that stage, there's no more qualifying, so you've, you've got nothing to lose. <laughs> well, I think you have to be, you have to be very disciplined because um, every night I have um, a small window of time to do my homework and I have to do it. So it, I, ha I have to be really tough with myself that way, which I am, and it, it works for me. I love Yuna Kim. She's, she's so beautiful on the ice, but so technically perfect. Um, I also, I love Joanny Rochette also be, for what she had to go through at the 2010 Olympics, losing her mom three days before the competition and still competing to a bronze medal. That's incredible. So I think, I think for me, I have to focus on just living in the moment and not dwelling on past mistakes or what happened yesterday or whatever, because you can't really change that. So you just have to kind of move on and think positive about the future. <laughs> Usually, um, the ice should be softer for figure skating because you can get uh, deeper into your knees. You get um, just, it's, it's just stronger for spinning, for jumping, for everything. Um, some, sometimes you get hard ice, which is meant more for hockey, which um, you don't get as much of a grip when you skate. So. Um, the boots are different, like the figure skates have a heel, so your, your heel is raised um, above your toe at all times. And then, um, of course, the toe pick. So um, skaters have a toe pick for jumps and for certain moves and footwork and spins. And there's a, a rocker on the 
figure skating blade where we spin on and take off. Um, for jumps, I'm not really sure if hockey skates have that or not. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to move up to the next level, so I'll be junior this year, and I guess just I'll just see where it takes me. Mm, about 18 to 20, at least. It's hard with school, but 18 um, is usually good. <laughs> I would say enjoy every moment because it's such a beautiful sport and you get so much out of it. So if you just enjoy it, then everything just comes together. That is quite impressive. I know I could never do that. I only wish I could. Uh, one thing I can do, however, is be a part of the Moira's improv team. Uh, Moira has a competitive improv team and has for a few years, and we did a uh, segment on it this year as they went off to the finals. Uh, let's take a look at that now. Um, a lot of my friends were on the team and they said it was super fun and they really liked the people and one of my best friends was on it and she was spending like every day after school there and she just kind of told me that I should come out. The tournament was really fun. Um, we did really well our first night of play, which is what they call our first competition, and then we came fifth overall. It was a really fun tournament. Everybody there was super nice and we made like a lot of really good friends and stuff. Definitely, it's really fun and it's a really good environment and the people you meet in it are like super nice and it's the only competition I've ever been to where like everybody cheered everybody on and was just happy to be there. My favorite performance would have had to been a life game done by a competitive team, I believe it was Center Hastings and it was just like a really down to earth scene and it like really hit home with a lot of emotions and stuff. It is a bit of a challenge, but like, for example, on our tournament, a lot of people were doing homework on any free time we had, and like, there's normally like a 20 minute like wait before we start doing anything, which is kind of nice because you can get stuff done in that time or go to other meetings, but you definitely have to balance everything. We're currently done our season, so we wait till next year to start competing again. Um, that was actually quite a while ago. It was in my grade 8 year. Uh, back then we had a non-comp team where the elementary students could uh, join the team and just kind of see what it's like and perform at the assemblies, but they obviously couldn't compete in the, uh, high, the secondary school uh, competition. Um, at the time, it was just something that I found very interesting, and I kind of wanted to uh, get out in the world a bit more and experience a few new things, and improv was one way of doing it, and a way of just kind of getting on stage and uh, talking and exploring myself and the scenes and everything. I've been part of improv for six years, so this is my sixth year. Uh, once again, I started in grade eight, and then I've had, I took an extra year in high school, and throughout all that time, I've been part of the improv team. Uh, most of it on the non-comp team, but when that was removed, I moved on to the competitive team. Um, you see, uh, with improv, obviously you can't actually rehearse it, but uh, what you do is you, there are certain parameters that each scene needs to follow, and so, you come up with, uh, so improv works by having a suggestion given by the audience and then creating a scene within certain parameters. Uh, it's usually a four minute scene with the uh, Canadian improv games and the way we practice is we just go up, we uh, get ready for the scene, we basically act as if uh, our coaches were the audience, they give us a suggestion, we do the scene. They give us feedback on what we can improve upon and we also do small activities that can help up improve upon certain skills such as uh, character physicalization or vocalization. Um, we rehearse around, or sorry, we practice around twice a week and when it gets near we start to have either more practices during a week or practices go longer. Uh, yes, we uh, recently had a tournament and we did quite well. We have a very, we had a high turnaround last year. And so a lot of people had graduated. We have a lot of new members this year, but we were still able to make it into the finals and we placed five out of 16 or so teams. Um, our team is just called the uh, Moira Improv Team. Yeah. I think my favorite moments uh, through my improv career 
would probably have had to have been the first time I was able to step onto the actual uh, stage as a competing member of Moira's improv team. It was just a great feeling. And so, yeah, even though we didn't score that well, I thought that as a team we really, really clicked. And I mean, we made finals, so that was really amazing. Um, because it was like my last year, I was kind of, I had more of a leadership role with it, so I was playing a lot of the, the leads in the scenes and things like that, and that was just such an incredible experience. And it was just so much fun. And it felt a lot friendlier than it had in the past, and I was just really proud of us as a team. Actually, um, the dramatic arts in general at Moira has decreased a little bit. I remember my first year there was two teams, a non-comp team and then a competition team. And there are probably eight people, so there are 16 people in total. And through, that, through the years, it's diminished. And this year, we only had a few people trying out. But I have to say that I kind of liked the tight-knitness of it because it made it less of a competition and less of a a power complex. So because it was more inclusive, I found that it was a lot more happier and a lot less competitive within the team. And because the competition lessened within the team, we were able to be friendly and actually act as one entity, which I think is a lot of the reason why we did so well in competition. Well, um, I'm actually an IV student, which means that I do a lot, a lot of w homework and things like that. And sometimes it's a little hard, like I've ran my own art shows and things like that. So sometimes um, it, time management does get really tricky. But the fact is, is that when you have something you love and things that are important to you, like school and like improv, you just kind of, you figure it out. So you compensate or you time manage and all those things were really valuable lessons for me. I find that the more practice you do, the better you feel. And it was kind of interesting because um, uh, this, this year, something really interesting happened because on our first night of play, so when we were trying to qualify for finals, I was next to someone who was really, really negative. And then the second someone who, who says something negative, I completely become an utter mess and I can't improvise because I always need constant validation. Whereas she worked really differently because she needs that idea of, oh no, we're doing terribly, so I need to do better. Where I'm like, we're doing great, so what I'm doing is okay. And um, so for me, for me, how I prepare for competition is again, lots of practice just so that you understand the structure of each game, but also having that positive atmosphere instead of a negative one. And also just pumping up your energy and having fun because a lot of improv is just about having fun up there, which makes it such a unique and interesting um, competition. Ooh, my favorite performance. Okay, so there's this thing called a style game. And the style game is essentially when a team goes up and they have to perform a scene within the style of something. So our style game was a dating show. So essentially you have like two contestants and they go off on a date and then based on their characteristics and um, the date they go on is all improvised. But one team did a Dr. Seuss theme. So essentially what they did is that they had these two narrators and they were all in rhyme and then there was all this cool physicalization of like flips and stuff like that happening. And I thought that was super cool. Just the way that that was done on scene was amazing. Wow, that was actually pretty impressive. Well, we'd just like to thank our viewers for tuning into Trojan TV yet again. I'm Jordan Marshall. I'm Andrew James. And thank you for watching.